Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Nomura and today we are going to take a look at one of those groups and organizations that help us tremendously in Rotary and that is being covered by media. We have with us today Coast of You and Leah Boyd, welcome. Thanks, Wade. And Gary, thank you. Gary Dobbins, thank you very much for joining us today. Pleasure. I wanted to sh have you on the show because of all you've done for what we do as, as Rotarians and especially in Carpinteria. Um, Leah, tell us a little bit about yourself. I was born and raised in Carpinteria, and I've had the great fortune to work for Coastal View News for, um, well, off and on for over a decade. Wow. And as the editor now for uh, eight years, and I now am raising my daughter in our community. She's going to be four in March. There's one thing good about uh, Carpinteria, everybody uh, knows everybody, so yeah, that, that's exactly. been nice. I'm sure you've enjoyed that. Yeah, it's fun. Good, good. How about you, Gary? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been the co-publisher of the Coastal View now for 21 years. Michael and I, Van Stry is my partner. Um, I've been in Rotary 21 years, wow. and I'm celebrating my 21st year in Rotary also. And um, there's been a lot that is changed to Carpinteria as far as I'm concerned is since I've been there and in the evolving um, community as it is. I mean com Carpinteria is such a unique community it's it's not hard to get involved with the people and things that are necessary to fundraise and do that kind of thing and this particular entity that you've created here was something I really really wanted because Rotary as Lee and I were talking on the way over here has so many special projects that they do for people so I really enjoy it, and I've enjoyed being in Rotary. Right. Well, thank you very much for what you're doing for us in our community. Tell us a little bit how you got involved. How did you end up in Rotary? Actually, one of my partners in the early day when we first started Coastal View was Rosemary Finucchi. Uh, she was married also to a district governor. <laughs> so uh, she was quite avid about me getting involved. So I went to a lot of free uh, lunches <laughs> because then we only had one club right. in Carpenter and now we have the two. But um, Rotary was after I had attended and was aware of what they were doing and what they were doing to give back in their communities. It was a perfect fit for me. Oh, good, good. Yeah. And um, what would you say was one of your Rotary highlights? Tell us something about what's special happened to you during a Rotary event or project. Probably in the very beginning, uh, it was back uh, many, many moons ago, uh, Kevin Baird was then the president of the club of Rotary. and. Uh, he decided he wanted to create uh, an immunization project uh, to get the kids. We found out Rotary's uh, had a program and they came to us and said that the uh, kids weren't being inoculated. And uh, Kevin Baird said he wanted to do something about it. So for five years, Rotary participated in seeing to it that all the uh, kids got immunized. And, uh, and that was probably my biggest one. I mean, I've, there's a lot more in there that I've been involved in. I mean, we uh, actually created Rods and Roses, the car show, as a Rotary fundraiser in the very beginning wow. when I first did it. But um, I think my big highlight was the uh, immunization program for kids. I really, and I, and then being supportive of everything else Rotary does, the uh, trips to Mexico with doctors and dentists and uh, water purification things and mm -hmm. stuff like that, so, yeah. But I, I, I think the immunization program was the biggest for me. That went five years and we got just tremendous success from it. Very true. And Leah, how about you? Um, being involved now as an editor to the newspaper, what have you seen uh, in the past as far as the nonprofits and how that helps the community, specifically Carpinteria? Because I'm sure you cover quite a few of these events. <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, they're really important to us, actually, to highlight the good work of the, the local clubs in town. Um, and, and we feel like there's a f full circle with it uh, in that by covering the news that comes out of the clubs, we're giving our readers, we're putting it in the face of our readers that these clubs and Rotary is really top of the list. Um, they're doing great things in town. 
And then we hope that when Rotary needs that extra push, when there's a Tomol Park to be built <laughs> or right. some big project, we hope that uh, having put those faces and those stories out there for so long that um, people in our community will really step up and say, this is an organization that's doing good all year round. We, we really want to pick it up a notch and support them. And I think you've accomplished that because um, thanks to you, quite a bit of what we do and our efforts are supported strongly by the community. Um, quite a bit so to a point that where they actually seek out our next project and what we're trying to do there. So thank you for that. Um, looking over in the history, is there any project or event uh, that Rotary did that you really remember? Something that stands out with all those? Well, I mentioned Tomal Park, and um, let me revise, Tomal Interpretive Play Area. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got really good at that. Yes, you did. Um, and actually, that project, that was phenomenal. When I, when I started with the paper over 10 years ago, um, that project was in its earliest phases, and Roxanne was involved in um, working with local kids in the schools right. Right. to develop plans for the park, what they wanted to see as the play area that you know they would most enjoy. Um, and we followed that story. And then I, I moved out of town for a couple years and came back to find that that, that project that it was a real dogged effort to, to get this project up and running. And it was continuing, and costs were climbing, but <laughs> plans just continued to be refined to to this point where um, now, of course, the project is built and it's it's phenomenal. It's unlike anything else that we have in town and really unlike anything that I've ever seen. And what makes that project special to me now is that I feel like I was in some small way a part of it right. by by covering the news of it throughout the years. And now I get to watch my daughter play wow. in that play area and just, just love to see that it, uh, it came to be and and that's really thanks to the community pouring its support into a, a project spearheaded by the Rotary and um, a, a project that that you guys didn't let go even <laughs> though I know that it, it, there were some major challenges and there I'm sure were times when when you questioned whether it was going to be possible but wasn't that about an eight year? It, it was over eight years. Over eight, eight, year, eight years, over eight years to develop to that project. Between all the entities involved, yeah. the state park, all of those. Sure. And your tenacity, staying with it, was a big part of it. Wasn't I it? have to admit that the Coast View played a large part of it because every time we have a little incremental <laughs> chance that it was going to happen again, it showed up in the press. And so we had a, a lot of community involvement that yes. helped push that along also. That was huge. And part of the plan and design of that playground was to make sure that the community had the ownership of it. Yes. And I'm glad the way you said it, that you know you felt a part of it because the community did. And without yes. that, it would have never happened. Yes. It would have never happened. And it is quite, the sidewalk, we should have brought pictures of the sidewalk. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I walk there now pretty much daily because I have a hike around Carpenteria that I do. And that walk that you've put with all of the names and those that support it and are in it is just so impressive. Yeah. It, it, it really is. It's the who's who of the Carpenteria and sure. those that have been involved with the project. I mean, you just look at the names on those bricks and it, it's really heartwarming. It really is. It is. And it, it's been very helpful for us, too. By the way, we have another 22 or 23 um, bricks going in this week. So wow. it keeps, keeps it going, and it's yeah. helped out tremendously. That project, by the way, started at a $128,000 budget, ended up almost a million dollars. So exactly. I'm glad we had the eight years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wouldn't have made it otherwise. Well, and I... I I think we've made it aware to the public too that there's, there's the maintenance and the liabilities that keep going on to that yeah. that we have to take care of you know yeah. and the community I think is aware of that now they, they know that it takes a, a fundraising effort to keep up all right. of that right. so part, part of the sales of the uh, pavers and the bricks the uh, commemorative mm -hmm. bricks goes directly to an endowment that we're establishing right now for that ongoing maintenance yeah. and that's been kind of a challenge thanks for bringing that up because yeah. we probably should put that out there a little better than we do yeah, well, the thing of it is, uh, uh, my co-publisher, Mike, 
really took an evident interest in that particular project also as Leah did and he wanted to make sure that they were aware all the time of what was going on in that park and uh, especially putting the thing in to get a brick yeah. you know that type of thing I mean it was one thing to try to sell them at the farmers market and that type of thing but every time it seemed that we published it in the paper, the form, and the uh, how to accomplish getting one of those bricks or one of those on the sidewalk. Um, and it made a real good feel good, good situation for Mike. Yeah, good. it really did. Now, I know um, in the Coastal View, you have a club scene that you cover um, all of the service clubs, uh, which has been a, a great asset because we get weekly coverage for a lot of the things that we as service clubs and organizations do. I believe that also led to the um, service service club week recognition. That was uh, a resolution by the city of Carpinteria to put right. those banners up each year. So, yes, a tremendous thank you for that. With the um, weekly coverage of what the uh, clubs are doing, do you have to solicit that out? Do you have to go to them, or do they most of them s help submit those? Does it work for you? Most of those are submitted to us, okay. and we have. Some clubs, like both the Rotary Clubs in town, who are such well-oiled machines that <laughs> I, very little has to be done to, to edit what we receive. Um, the photos are high quality that we receive. The information answers the who, what, where, when, why. Um, we, we really feel fortunate that, that we know that some of our content is just taken care of. And so we, we hope that it's a win-win and that we're providing some space and some ink for the clubs, but it's also a win for us where we get to hmm. say, okay, this is a, a little bit less of our resources that we have to put toward finding the news and generating that and, um, and going through all of the steps. Um, it, which are necessary for some for some <laughs> other parts of the paper. <laughs> it's very good because I, I've seen very few other um, papers that cover anything like that, a specific club scene. I think that's important. It becomes crucial, especially for Carpinteria, because Carpinteria is so community-based. Oh, yeah. You see the other ones, they're so fractured out that you don't really see the, uh, the internal support yeah. from different groups, different organizations. I, I, and I think to add to that, um, we're more likely to put club news in our newspaper if it if it feels like news and in that way what the rotary clubs do is great the the quality of speakers that both the clubs have yeah. week to week yes. it is so high that it's it's news that people want to read about and um I'm I'm learning something every week when I when I get the press releases <laughs> Good. from both clubs. Have you had any comments back on that club scene? If uh, people are using it um, outside of these service clubs, or is it mostly service clubs feedback that it's positive? Well, I think I think that what people like to do when they open our newspaper and what people can count on when they open our newspaper is see the faces of their friends and their neighbors and. Um, I think it makes people feel special to, to be in there and to know somebody and to feel connected to the people who are in our newspaper. So whether or not we're hearing directly from our readers that, um, hey, that was a, a really interesting speaker that they had at Rotary, um, I, I feel very confident that people are opening up the paper and looking at that yeah. section and saying, wow, this is these are neat things that are going on in our town. I think I might want to add too, we've highlighted a lot, the one thing about Coastal View that made it unique about being tied to the community, it's free. Yeah. For 21 years the newspaper has been a free paper. Uh, the 85 year old paper that was there always had a subscription and a subscription base. Um, we have such a vast support of the community that we have uh, a section that was created by my partner, Michael, uh, called the Honor Roll. And these are just people that want to contribute, want to put in and keep the paper in a free status so that anybody has the ability to pick up, get the news, find out what's going on in their communities. So, And I think also the readership probably doesn't really realize, nor the community, how much effort you put forward. And when I say that as an example, if there's a upcoming 
fundraiser, mm -hmm. an upcoming event specific to Rotary or any of the other service organizations, you guys put it out there. Yes. And that's that's free of charge most of the time yeah. to these people. And that money goes directly back to the community. Mm -hmm. So I think there's very few people that see that working as that relationship. But um, that sure helped out our community tremendously. Yeah. Having that Appreciate uh, available. That. Wait, uh, that, that point was what we wanted to be in the very beginning, a community paper a real one where everybody had the opportunity um, to voice, to say, to do what they would like to see do in the paper. So, and Leah, when she came back, um, had a vision of enhancing that because she grew up there. She could go out, she knew most of the people, and um, so that strengthened it in that, in that way too. It took my, her mother and me a lot to recruit her. <laughs> I'm sure it did. <laughs> <laughs> now you were honored uh, a few years ago um, for the newspaper. I, I yeah. recall you talking about that when you were hanging out at Jack's one day. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I don't know. We've had so many national awards. Uh, we are part of the a, uh, what's AFCP, AFCP uh, which is the Community Free Papers. And um, over the years, the editorial department, the advertise, everybody has for their photography work. Everything has been recognized on a national level. So I think we're standing now, after all these years, at about 150 national awards wow. For, wow. for our community and what we've done in the community so yeah it's a it's a feel-good type of thing uh, Mike and I um, really don't toot our horn much about that but um, what I'm most proud of is when we receive those types of awards it's a reflection that we're doing our job right and uh, yeah. that's what I appreciate more from it. <laughs> well, I know for a fact that you got the attention of Rotary International because <laughs> uh, somebody from PR and marketing came to me and asked if I knew anything about how the Coast of You and our Rotary clubs were working because they said they've never seen weekly articles on Rotary. <laughs> so uh, that's, congratulations that's cool. to you for that. Yeah. that. That was big. Yeah. Yeah, because they take a look at all ways to uh, try and promote well, Rotary. As being a Rotarian, the things that I kept seeing over all these years was the fact that um, every club gives back in a very special way on their projects. And there's vast projects from everything from water projects in Mexico and, like I said, doctors and sure. things that go on. And that's what uh, caught me was the fact that there is so much that needs to be said about what Rotary is actually doing. And as you went into the upper echelons of uh, Rotary <laughs> and became district governor and so forth, it put a little bit of a branch to that where we were reaching out to hear what other clubs were doing. And, uh, and I think it's important that the public and the communities realize what that's about. Very, so, very true, yeah. very true. Um, I've seen Rotary worldwide and starting at the community level. So the mm -hmm. uh, impacts occur at the community, but then the community could be anywhere in the world. That's right. W with that same, same exactly. Effect. So uh, that's a good way to look at that. Yeah. Definitely. So. I, uh, I just, I was talking with Lee on the way over here. That was something that was uh, impressive to me all along was the fact that every club's project has great meaning to the general public. You know, it's a way that they really don't realize how much they're being uh, spoken about and done with the projects that the Rotary do and come forth. Yeah, yeah. that that is um, definitely the case. I've been to quite a few, probably majority of the Rotary clubs, cities and communities, and very seldom. And they're usually complaining because they say we have to pay to get anything in the paper and if mm -hmm. we even get anything in there submitted that we think is newsworthy it goes away they never hear anything about <laughs> it and so that has been a challenge i would say in probably 75 percent of the communities we work with them wow. uh, the newspapers i think get so commercialized that they don't realize what True. they could do to benefit the communities through supporting service clubs and service organizations exactly yeah. yes and there's great projects i mean I mean, I there just, yeah. you could probably list thousands more than <laughs> I could, but I mean, it's just the idea that all of them are important to their communities. They are. And they, are, they really are. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, well, Rotary's primary focus and goal is to impact communities, make those changes, and make mm -hmm. it a better place. Yes. And that's why Rotarians are Rotarians. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they don't always get the support of <laughs> the people they need to that would also get, gain that benefit. Yeah, it is. It's, um, like you said, uh, most of the industry in now and the newspaper industry is changing and evolving in many different ways, especially in the last five, ten years with all the internet stuff and things going on. But to stay focused on getting the news within the community, you know. Uh, I used to joke in the early days that, you know, if uh, Michael Jackson was in town, I'd cover the spelling bee at the school before I'd go <laughs> see him, you know. I mean, True. our interest, and she has really held to it to a very point that Carpinteria is what our focus is, what the community is doing, and that's what we concentrate on. So. Well, I know Leah's been a, a hard worker at that. I see her at every city council meeting. <laughs> yeah, she's very diligent on that, and she's a one-man show. She does everything from writing it to getting the pictures. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we <laughs> trained her as a photographer. A yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, okay, what woman. <laughs> I think one of the special things about Coastal View is that we have a staff that's like a family, yes. and yes. it's a it's a small staff, but we um, we all are part of the community too. So uh, we're not coming in from afar and pretending to know about the place that we're covering. We really do know it. We, we our heart is with it. So mm -hmm. it, it shows, and all, all of the articles basically cover to cover, and the newspaper covers local, and it's. Um, mm -hmm not written from somebody outside, there's no doubt about that, yeah. you, that you could see that. It's yes. all within within the community. Um, and that's outstanding. Uh, we really appreciate that. I want to talk a little bit, we got a little bit of time here, um, about, about the TV show, the one we're doing right now. Yeah. Gary, uh, you're the one that twisted my arm, maybe sit in this chair here, so tell me a little <laughs> bit about how this fits into media also and how it promotes Rotary. And well, I've been involved with, uh, I was, member number 95 when this all started. I used to produce a show called Carpentry Alive. And then the city got me on the board and then I ended up writing the bylaws for all of this and so I've been involved in it for over 20 years now. Wow. Uh, representing the city of Carpentaria. And uh, it was a point where I felt that this was another point where not only our paper could talk about what Rotary does, but that we could reach out because of the reach that this has in the county and how far it goes out. And again, you arose to a level where you had access to all the other clubs in the communities. And it was just a perfect type scenario to bring this to the community so they all could see what each club is doing and what their projects were about. So um, that was really my incentive on that and um, like I said having you already rising in that echelon we had access to them because I would not have access I mean Leah would not have reached out to the ones up in Mora Bay and Cayucas <laughs> where one of the new clubs you started and that type of thing right, right. had uh, this not been there that I thought would work and I think you've done a great job doing it and of course Matt I can't thank Matt enough I, Matt, yeah. uh, uh, the new director here has just been fabulous I, I, I've worked with many of them since over the years since we do it but I mean um, and it was a great change when we finally got control of it away from the Cox communication side of it because Cox used to be the controlling factor here mm -hmm. but uh, yeah it was um, <coughs> It was important that uh, we build something like this and a bridge, I call it, to get to the publics in all the communities to say, this Rotary Club is doing this, yeah. or this Rotary Club is right. doing that. Right. So that's where I felt the importance was. It's, it's, it's been great. Uh, to be honest with you, when you approached me the first time on that, I go, well, yeah, I could probably do two shows. <laughs> I'm not having any idea what <laughs> material I'd use. Um, we've been taping now since uh, doing shows since uh, first part of August so it's Good. it's about yes. a half year getting close well, to you half have, year time. Yeah. You have a great district I mean you have the clubs you have access to them yes it's it's um, it, it's important that we uh, continue this I, and I hope that you found enjoyment 
by bringing in these other clubs. That's another thing because the, the other clubs all have a project or something that they're doing wonderful that right. they need to let everybody know about it. True. So, true. And it's difficult, as you said, getting <laughs> papers or getting attention that it, way. It, it is true. Um, we were fortunate a few uh, shows ago to actually have an interview done um, with the president of Rotary International from oh, Sri Lanka. See, so that yeah, actually also goes. See. So you get to see everything, like you say, from the big picture all the way down. And that was because I needed to do more than two shows. <laughs> so, so we started looking around at uh, other opportunities. And uh, it's pretty fascinating how far-reaching Rotary actually is when you start doing these shows like this. Well, I think, too, some like our club, and the uh, we have two clubs now in Carpinteria, having a uh, public relation type of uh, idea on their boards and how they submit and get stuff out, this is a big guide for them, a big help on how to do that, how to accomplish that. I mean, it's one thing to sit in a Rotary Club up in Cayucas and, and, and not have anybody really aware of what they're trying to That's accomplish true. or do. Right. And so it's, it's another venue. And I think you're right. The success of the clubs uh, and the way they impact the communities is based on a cooperative effort. Yes. Because uh, oftentimes I've seen clubs go out there and they extend themselves as far as they can go <laughs> on a project for the community and nobody knows about it. Yeah. Nobody covers it, you know, and it kind of goes to science, uh, unwritten that it just happened overnight by somebody doing something. Yeah. Well, wasn't it the Cayucas Club you started and there was like six, eight people that started that club or something? Which was the one? That was, that was probably one of them. I didn't start that, but I but was I mean, part of the, I was part part of the group. In getting them going, but True. I mean, there was so few True. members wow. and then they took it and yeah. just ran with it, it. It, it. Exactly right. Yeah. And so what you're creating, uh, the Coastal View and the way media is covering Rotary, uh, you're setting an example, definitely, without a doubt, that uh, successful clubs are going to have to eventually take a look at and try and figure out how they can do the same. Well, they should have on their boards a, a public relation type right. slot where per a person takes responsibility as our club, somebody takes a picture, right. somebody gets the information to Leah, that type of thing. And I think that would be a, an important entity for all of the clubs to create that spot or that position on their boards. Now I know uh, Rotary's been very, uh, I would say, uh, focused on trying to create that also. And they went through and they've done millions of dollars in grants trying to rebrand Rotary mm -hmm. to bring this awareness. Um, that millions of dollars doesn't go far if you still don't get people talking about it or mm -hmm. getting it covered. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely right on that. I see one of the key components, like you say, is if Rotary could get involved with the media part of it. In other mm -hmm. words, you, you have a member, you have somebody there willing to do the work, willing to take that chance and cover it. Because mm -hmm. as Leah said, what happens in the community oftentimes is spearheaded or started by a service organization or service group. Mm -hmm. That changes the community. Yeah, somebody takes it and runs with That's it. Right. That's, That's right. That's what it's all about. Well, with that, uh, about out of time here. So again, thank you very much for that. And thank you for what you're doing for, for Rotary making that, that big difference. Well, appreciate you having us. <laughs> Thanks, and with that, um, take a look at the Coastal View. Take a look at some of the media that we have to offer because Rotary is making a huge impact within each community. And with that, plan on visiting it, jump out there, give them a hand because they can use all the help they can get. With that, thank you very much and we will see you at the next show.